Hey there, Roamers. Welcome to the Roam in Your Home podcast and YouTube channel, where we get to hear from full-time RVers, unpack their experiences, and learn actionable advice to help you roam in your home too. I'm your host, Jamie Williams. Thank you so much for being here. Buckle up, my friend. Let's get ready to go on an adventure together right now. Welcome to episode number 10. Thanks so much for being here, my friend. This week, you are in for a treat. I'm talking to the OGs of full-time RVing, Vern and Katie from Nomad Nesters. This conversation was so much fun. I had a blast hearing all about their first experiences full-time RVing back in 2005 with their four kids. They didn't have the luxury of watching YouTube or Instagram and learning from everyone else like most of us did. They figured it out as they went, and their experiences are hilarious, so interesting, and super inspiring. Today, I'm sharing part one of this awesome conversation, and I know you will love this episode. So I won't make you wait any longer. Please help me give a warm welcome to Vern and Katie. Hi, Vern and Katie. Welcome to the show. Thank you. We're We're excited to be here. So glad to be here. Oh, well, thank you so much for being here. I am super excited for our listeners to learn about you. And I'm honored to have you here because you guys are the OG of full time RVers. (laughs) Yes. I cannot wait to find out more. And so the first question I always ask, and this is going to totally answer why I said you guys are the OG RVers is how long have you guys been on the road or if you want to answer when did you decide to do this RV life yeah so on May 5th of this year it will be one year for this experience of traveling full-time and then back in 2005 we had four kids at home then and we started traveling in 2005 and we were on the road for nine years and then we took a nine-year break so this is going to be our 10 year but technically our first year for our second travels in just a few days. That is so incredible because back in 2005, I don't even think I knew this was a thing. How did you guys know? Uh, We didn't (laughs) actually know it was a thing either. No, we didn't. And Katie was certain she was right that it was a thing. And I was like, no, normal people do not do this. We can't do this. And (laughs) it took a lot of pressure on her side to make this happen. So this is 100% her doing and I give her kudos every day for it. So well, you know, we went to an RV show in Florida like well it's actually at the state fair and there was an RV dealer there and I walked in and I was like oh my gosh we could live in this and my husband's like what are you what are you talking about (laughs) and it took us you know because back then we didn't have internet we didn't have smartphones we had flip phones there was just a lot of ways to make money on the road and it took us about oh five years to be able to figure out how we could you know pull it off and make money and it was a big obsession for about five years for Katie (laughs) for for me I was trying to find every way to let her know this was fun but we need to get back to reality and live the normal life and now I feel bad that I was so wrong but she did a great job well it worked out really really well do you care if I tell you how we got on the road oh I would love it I would love that please do so we ended up moving to Texas my husband grew up in Texas but we moved down to Dallas and it was so blasted hot and I just kept thinking oh my gosh what are we doing and we homeschooled our kids. So my husband agreed. We're like, let's just get a little pop-up trailer and we could do some pop-up camping. And so the kids and I decided that we would take the pop-up from Texas to Utah for a couple weeks. And we loved it so much that we were gone for, we gone for four months. Now, it's really important in this story to understand that I'm not with them. I had to stay back to do my day job because I wasn't working remote. And Katie's like, I'm just going to just take a trip really quick up to Utah and back. I'm like, okay. Okay. And so she's flying solo in this old rickety like pop-up. 1968 pop-up. <laughs> oh my gosh. She didn't start in Dallas because we were both together in Galveston. And so she left from Galveston, Texas, gets to Utah. And what happens in Utah? We ended up staying three more months longer. We went to <laughs> Idaho, oh. Oregon, California, Washington. And, um... and I'm at home alone <laughs> wondering, where's my family at? What's going on? Oh my gosh. It was just so much fun. And he did the most romantic thing that any man could ever do. He flew out to Seattle 
and he brought this little wooden sign because back in the day of RVing, everybody had wooden signs that had your name and then everybody in your family or your spouse and brought a little wooden sign that says home is where we park it. And he had each of our names on the sign and he's like, all right, fine, let's just do it. Let's try it. And so he said we could go for it. And I was super excited, but I I was was just missing my family. (laughs) (laughs) They were having way too much fun without me. I was like, we're doing this. I was really worried he'd change his mind when we got back to Texas. And so we got back to Texas and we were there for a couple of weeks and he had a business trip. And when he was gone, he had said, you know what, we can get ready to do this. And I thought, okay, so are we going to do it slow or fast? So I had three days and by the time he was home, everything in our house was sold. And I I truly, (laughs) I truly came home to neighbors walking out of my house with my TV, my couch. And I'm like, what is happening? And Katie's like, well, you said we should do this. I'm like, yeah, but not this weekend. <laughs> and so with an empty house, we decided, I guess we should move into an RV. Yeah, we found an <laughs> RV like three weeks later and that was it. We just hit the road. It was great. Oh my gosh. This is the best story I've ever heard. I am so glad you gave us all the details because Katie, first of all, your drive and determination to do whatever you you know, have your mindset. I love that. That is so awesome. You do have to learn to love it. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I I think that the funny thing is, is, you know, we kind of laugh about it and things, but really, truly, we had homeschooled our kids. We, We weren't sure why at that point we had all of our kids. And I think our oldest, but when we left was 11 and or 12. And at that point, we knew that we wanted to be able to be with our kids all the time. We had always worked together as a family. Vern always worked at home until we moved to Texas. So that was a big struggle to have him working outside the home. And we just knew it was the right thing for our family. We just didn't know how to do it. And we didn't know that it was a thing. And there weren't a lot of other families out at the time doing it also. Katie has a beautiful vision that is unparalleled. So I've learned through many years of marriage to just say yes. If you think that's important, then we should definitely do that. So uh-huh. I'm glad this is recorded because now <laughs> I can go back and like say, do you remember that one time you said that? <laughs> oh, I love that you said that, Vern. And I do love that you appreciate her for that. And what a great story. I love that you guys decided to take this risk because, you know, like Randy and I, my husband and I, we had so many other families to learn from. YouTube was just, oh my gosh, we'd spent months and months and hours and hours learning and you guys did not have any of that. So that is incredible that you weren't afraid to take the risk. You knew that the reward was totally worth it. Yes. I mean, it definitely had its learning curve. And even our very first RV, we were in Texas after scouring eBay and I think Craigslist Craigslist, existed back then. (laughs) Then we found an RV in California and we called the guy up and we said, you know, tell us a little bit about it. And I said, okay, we'll take it. And he said, do you want to come see it? (laughs) All right. No. I said, honestly, I'm just going to be serious. I don't know the first thing about RVs. And even if I came and looked at it, I would just be faking it. So I'm just going (laughs) to have to take your word on it. So we'll take it. And I sent him the money and we went and picked up a very used RV for our first (laughs) time on the road. It was great. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. Now, what RV was that? What was your first RV like? Oh, I think it was like a 1998 Forest River, like the first old, old toy haulers that you know it was had the aluminum siding yeah okay and it was a toy hauler it was really old and I understand this now but I didn't then he was an electrician and so he allowed his understanding to rework and perfect this RV in a way that no one else could understand I didn't know how to turn the generator on I didn't know how to do anything because he had redone everything in that RV But we stopped at my parents' place, also in Texas, and we redid all the interior in a very beginner way, I guess you could say. Yeah, we (laughs) we didn't know about weight and balance. We put a full-size bunk bed in the back. Like a (laughs) solid wooden set of bunk beds and a full residential fridge. And only afterwards did we realize the importance of the fact that like the kitchen setup was on one side of the RV and that happened to be the same side we put the beds in the fridge. Oh, wow. It always was angling to one side going down the road. A lot of beginner mistakes, but I think those mistakes really helped us figure out, you know, what we wanted and mm-hmm. 
and how we wanted to do it. You know, things like we didn't think about the fact that the refrigerator that we put in needed power when we drove, you know, little things like that you just don't think about. And now we look back and Vern got a really good tagline while we traveled. And he just said, the worst decisions make the best stories. And truly, we made some of the worst decisions, but they ended up being the most fun experiences and the best stories because we learned as we went. And Mm -hmm. as a family, that was kind of fun to do together. Oh, I love that tagline. I'm totally going to use that because that does help. I love that you guys really learned as you went and just continued to grow and and change and improve. I love it. Yes. You have to be able to look at every scenario and not let it bother you and realize it'll be okay. And this will be really fun to tell around the dinner table sometime. (laughs) You are so right. So how long did you have that first RV? Too long. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I think we had it probably three years and then um, the Heartland Cyclone came out the year that we bought it. It was the first year it came out and oh my gosh, we thought we were like living like kings. It was It was such a change. I was the one that was saying, no, we don't need a new one. I can fix anything that breaks. And it happened to be that we busted the leaf springs that hold up the axles on the tire on that RV. And before I could even get the rig stopped, it had eaten through the floor. And it did happen to be the same side as the fridge, the bunk bed, and all the kitchen. (laughs) So that it makes sense in hindsight. Oh, gosh. But we did go get this new rig. And it was... It was amazing. It was so... (laughs) You know, three queen beds, two twin beds. Two, and it, it was we had beautiful. four kids and three dogs and a bunch of hamsters and lizards and all the things. And it just was the perfect little home for our family. Yes. <laughs> So the first one was a travel trailer? No, it was a fifth wheel. It was a toy hauler. It had one slide on it. It just wasn't made for full-time living. It was more of that kind of weekender kind of thing. And yeah. it definitely wasn't made for what we were doing. But when we first started, we were really nervous. We didn't know what we wanted. you know. And honestly, we didn't have a lot of time because when I <laughs> sold everything, I also called our landlord and said, hey, we're going to be out in three weeks. So we had three weeks to get a rig. And it was such a good starter rig because, you know, we've never even stepped foot besides the RV show in the RV before. So it gave us a chance to find out what we really didn't like and what we think we wanted. And so it was such a great transition because sometimes you meet a lot of families and they say, oh, we just bought this rig, but we've never been in an RV and we wish we would have done something different. So I think it was great for us to just put our toe in and see if it's what we wanted. That's awesome. So you went from the first rig to the second one, the Cyclone. And then did you have anything else after? After that, like, what are you in now? We didn't. So we are right now in a fifth wheel. We're in a Keystone Alpine. When we first hit the road, we bought a 24 foot class C and we traded it in about three months ago. We were actually going to be shipping it to Europe and we had some health stuff come up. So we decided if we're going to be in the US for a while, living in a 24 foot class C just was a little too small. So (laughs) we're back in a fifth wheel again. Yeah. Big, big hugs to all the people living in van conversions. (laughs) Oh my God. Yes. That's a whole new challenge I'm not ready to accept yet. So Yeah, that's what we did. So we didn't know anything about RVing and we sold our four bedroom home to start doing travel therapy to start making memories. And we bought a 40 foot fifth wheel and a 3,500 dolly. And we're like, okay, let's just get what we want. This is awesome. And for four years, we absolutely loved it every day. We're like, can you believe we're doing this? (laughs) And then during COVID, there was no contracts for us. So we were stationary, absolutely hating it, did not buy an RV to sit in an RV park. And so we decided to do something crazy. And we sold our fifth wheel and bought a 20 foot travel trailer. (laughs) just as a bucket list adventure that was going to be about maybe six months to a year. And here we are. We just celebrated three years that like actually hurts to say it (laughs) because (laughs) we're over it. We are looking at RVs every day. We're ready for the the upgrade again. This was just supposed to be a bucket list adventure. And we went on some wonderful places that we could never go with the big rig, but we're definitely looking again. So yeah, I don't know how people do it. Yeah, we have stuff in storage because we knew this was going to be temporary and we want all of our stuff back again. (laughs) You know, it's two different lifestyles. We loved having the 
24 foot classy because we could go anywhere. We could pull over at the drop of a hat, you know, and now it takes you a few miles to figure out how to turn over. And and so, yeah, there are definitely benefits, aren't there? <laughs> I know. Like the first time we picked it up, we stopped for lunch. We went to Walmart with our RV. We're like, wow, we could never do this before. This is awesome. And we did go, like I said, to places that we could have never went with the big rig, but you definitely do not have room. Everything is inconvenient. You can't have all your stuff with you. And so definitely pros and cons to both, but we're both ready to uh, get our home back and get something else a lot bigger. So hats off to the people who live small all the time. But that's so cool. I always like to ask people, and now that you have had some different types of RVs and had some challenges in all of them, I want to find out what are three things that you love about your RV, just so when people are shopping and looking for RVs, that things that they can keep in mind. And so you guys can answer your current RV. I would love to know about your current RV. And if you guys want to give us some things that you loved about the other RVs, we would love to hear that too. You know, I think my favorite thing about this RV, and and we specifically chose a fifth wheel because our second oldest daughter and her husband and two kids, they travel full time also. And so we travel together about 80% of the time. And we have a seven and five year old grandchild and we love to have them over. And the fifth wheel, I really like having the rear living area because it gives us more of a living room feel and the kids can run around and play. And so I really do like that about this RV that it does have that family living room, living space. So when all six of us are in here and playing games or cooking, we just kind of have that home feel. And so I think that's with this RV, that's my favorite thing about it. What about you? You know, I am probably too easy going on this stuff. My preference is a fifth wheel in general. We had a travel trailer as a not on the road full time kind of just weekender. Oh, I loathed having to go anywhere because I would white knuckle everywhere we went and I just did not enjoy that at all. The fifth wheel is a just a safer feeling to me. And so I just like the concept of the fifth wheel. I enjoyed our class C and we looked at purchasing a class A and we haven't gone that direction yet. I'm interested in trying that out at some point, but I like just in general fifth wheel. This particular one, I enjoy just how the hookups are where, you know, outside you have a really good, what they call wet bay. So everything's all in one place. It's easy to fill your tanks up. It's easy to flush the tanks. And again, coming from the old style when we were on the road last, it has come a long way. And I really enjoy that. Those are great things. One of the things that we learned kind of the hard way is exactly what you talked about, the difference of towing a fifth wheel versus a travel trailer. Nobody ever talks about that. And you see so many people towing a travel trailer and probably because they are you know, more affordable usually and, and they usually start with that. And I don't think people realize how much more stable and less stress it is to to tow a fifth wheel. And so we started with a fifth wheel. And so we just assumed everything tows like that. And then when we went for the travel trailer, it was like, oh my gosh, this is all over the place. Even though with the anti-sway and all of the safety precautions that we took, it's like, wow, this tows so different. Yes. I learned that too. I, we started without any of the sway bars quickly got the sway bars but it's still it just is not a fifth wheel and every time katie would say hey let's go to this place i'd look at the distance I'm like oh no i'm gonna be so tense and sore by the time we get there i'm gonna need a massage exactly that is so true and then now that you're in your current rig what are some things that maybe you wish were a little bit different like maybe three things that you dislike about your current rv so that people can keep in mind when they're rv shopping well katie can you make this down to three <laughs> you caught us right in the middle of a project discussion. We'll call it discussion. We're just, as... we're renovating the inside. Um, you know, oh. I wish RVs <laughs> felt a little more less RV style. I want it to be lighter and brighter and more homey, but I think that goes to everyone's personal decorating. You know, the one thing that I do miss about living in a home versus an RV is I miss having a great big bathtub. I would love a little more storage space. We did go shorter. We didn't want to go really long. So we specifically got an RV that was 35 feet because we didn't want to max out on being able to go to national parks and things. You know, I'm really happy with our RV. We have a full-size refrigerator, full-size oven, probably just a little more under storage would be my my yeah. main thing and maybe more closet space. I mean, no matter how big your closet is in an RV, probably everybody wants a little more closet space. 
You are right. I love your RV. I looked at the reel of your tour and it is so beautiful. And you guys have done such a good job. I do see though what you mean. I don't think there's ever enough storage. And I do agree with there's so much like RV feel. And when you see these RV renovations and they look more homey, it's like, oh yeah, so tempted to do that as well. I love that. What's the process right now? Are you guys in the middle of doing anything, any projects right now? or What do you think we're the first step we of? We are. We are <laughs> painting everything. We're taking off the slide. You know how the slides always have that big bulky trim? We're replacing the furniture with more white homey furniture. We're, you know, taking down the blinds. We're repainting all the cabinets. And so like I say, I mean, isn't that why you buy a brand new RV is to get rid of all the beautiful new things. <laughs> And put you other things in. I, I'm looking at six gallons of paint in here that are getting ready to go up on the wall. And I can't wait to continue following and seeing the renovations. That's exciting. It will be worth it. It is. And I think that's the fun thing about RVs is oftentimes, especially we go visit family and they'll say, oh, come on in, use our shower, come stay with us. You know, and I think people forget that this really is our home. RVers that are full time, it's our home. And so it's just like any home that you move into. You just add those touches to make it yours. I agree. I love that. I love all that you guys are doing, especially the furniture. I feel like in our last rig, it was a Jayco Pinnacle, which is considered like the luxury fifth wheel. We thought it was really great at the beginning, but quickly the furniture breaks down if you're using it all the time and it's not anything like a home. So I'm, I'm glad you guys are doing that. We're excited. I'll have to send you pictures. We're, I mean, we're at the very beginning stages. We plan to be here for a few more weeks and then Utah for a month. And I'm hoping we get it all done because we're super excited yes oh that's awesome so since you guys have started you have so much great experience i always like to find out too what are three of your favorite rv accessories and must-haves you know so many people when they start this rv life like us like we had no idea and we're searching youtube and pinterest and all of the things and trying to find you know from instagram what are things that people you know need and you don't really have a lot of room for all this excess and so I love to find out what people love to have in their RV. Either it could be safety or it could just be like gadgets that you love to have or to recommend for somebody else starting this RV life. What do you guys think? You know, I don't know if it's a technical RV gadget per se, but we have our electric trikes. They're recumbent trikes. We really love having trikes and electric ones that we're able to just go and explore. So when we park the RV, we use them for grocery shopping, movie night, whatever we do, we use our trikes as often as possible. So we love having the opportunity to be able to explore around with our electric bikes. I think that's my probably number one favorite. And, and I like that one because if you are enjoying the RV life, and again, everyone does it for different reasons, but every new place, I just want to go out and explore it. I want to, I want to know more than the RV park of it, you know, and having a way to get out of the RV park and get onto some little trails and back roads. And it's also a great way to meet locals and I love it. So that's a good one. Our last RV and going onto this RV soon is something that not having it for a while, I didn't know I was missing it, but we got it. What do you call it? It's a 360 degree camera system and it went all around the RV. So while I'm driving, there are no blind spots. And you have a little screen in the dash and it lets me know where every car is and it's always recording. So if there is an accident, it's easy to show what happened. I have never felt such a peace of mind when we had that going. And it's so easy to make a decision on, you know, when to change a lane because you can just look at the screen and you see all the way behind you. And I love that. So that one's going to be going on this one really fast. And I think the third would be, and I know a lot of people have, you know, they go back and forth. Should we get a washer dryer? Should we not get a washer? dryer, it's space, it's all the things. We went for the first six months in the Class C. And then in our first RV, when we traveled for the first three years, we didn't have a washer and dryer. And I love having a washer and dryer in our home. Just it saves money. It's easy to throw things in. You don't have to have piles of laundry building up. And so especially for people when they're making that decision, should we use that space for a washer and dryer? 
And I 100% say that's the one thing I don't think I'd want to live without in an RV. I mean, the only downside of that is you miss all the drama at the RV park with switching laundry. The laundry room. (laughs) I love that because we had washer dryer hookups and a really great like stackable pantry closet in our bathroom area of our fifth wheel. Never, ever got the washer dryer. We're like, oh, we're going to get it. We're going to get it. And it was perfect. It would have been so great. We kept putting it off. We lived in it for four years without it. And then, of course, this little one has no room. We realize how much money we have just thrown away every week of going. And yes, the drama at the laundromats. Oh, my goodness. And it's so hard when you're traveling to find a good one and sometimes even a safe one. We've been into some that we uh, didn't feel even safe to be there. So it's so nice to have a washer dryer. I cannot wait to have that. It is. And it's just the things like, you know, wet rags, you don't want to have to let sit around. And yeah, it's so nice. So that's the one thing if you're on the fence, definitely. I'm a a big washer dryer lover. Oh, awesome. And Vern, what you were talking about with your camera system. Oh my gosh, like I didn't even know that existed. We have the backup camera, but I didn't know about the 360. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. It is awesome. The one we use is from Taddy Brothers, T-A-D-I Brothers. But what's nice, I it's so technical, but it gives you a true bird's eye view. It looks like a drone is hovering over your rig. You see the top of your rig and you see all the way around it. And when you put your right blinker on, it gives you a wider view to the right. When you put your left blinker on, it shoots over to a wider view on the left. And like when you put your high beams on, it shoots up high and records further away. Oh my gosh. It's unbelievable. It's a beautiful system. And what I love is at night when you're boondocking, you can choose, but you wire it into one of your TVs. And so while we're in our bedroom, Room. If I'm hearing a noise outside while we're in a Cracker Barrel parking lot, I can turn the TV on and I see all the way around my rig and I don't have to go out and investigate. That is priceless peace of mind. I am so glad you guys talked about it because I had no idea that that existed and that's something that I want like right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right where we're at right now, I probably don't need it, but we hit the road again. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. Yes. I don't want to be on the road without it again. That's wonderful. I love it. Like even driving down the road, you can just see the road lines and so if someone comes into your lane and you guys collide it's on video you can show exactly where the road lines were and the fact that they were in your lane it's an amazing system i've loved it so is there like a subscription for that as well like no. to hold the recording or it records onto a computer in your rig oh wow and you just keep a memory card in it yeah you buy it it's yours and it's awesome Oh, that's so great. Everything we talk about, we'll be putting links in the show notes. And then also you'll have a page on our website with all the links as well. So that's great. I've seen you guys on your bikes and your reels and videos. I love that you guys have those. That is awesome. You have another vehicle that is electric too, that you can explore and just have fun and exercise too. That's really great. When we have more room, once again, one day, we definitely want to get some electric bikes too. They really are nice. It's great when you can go out and explore and shop and we can put seven, eight bags of groceries on our bikes. No problem. Bring yeah. them back. And we just use them every day. It's probably what we use more than anything yeah. in our RV life. Yeah. I love that. I want to tell you guys how excited I am for your weight loss, your health journey and seeing what you guys have done. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? How much weight have you guys lost? I've lost about 85 pounds. How much yeah. have you lost? Wow. I'm not that good of an overachiever. So I'm down like 45. I had a lot to start with. You know, before we no, started our no. game, <laughs> I had a business that just took off and we ended up being at our warehouse, you know, seven days a week, 15 to 20 hours a day. We had so many employees and shifts and life just got crazy and busy. And I have a couple health conditions and POTS is one of them. And so being able to exercise, standing up and doing those normal things were really hard. And when we hit the road, we realized how much we let our health kind of slip just because we were so busy growing businesses. And we decided just to be super intentional when we got back on the road and get back to the things that we love and taking time to exercise, meditate, hike, you know, eat well. And I know you don't have to be in an RV to do all of those things. But for us, the RV 
me was the key to starting doing that because when we were in our day-to-day life and the way that we were working, we just didn't have time to focus on ourselves. And it's been a really great journey to get back to feeling like we used to and really loving to be able to explore and have the energy to do it. Yeah. And and it's one of those things that whatever lifestyle changes you feel you could make and stick to, you just have to make them and stick to it because you don't see the change. And there's one particular picture Katie has of me in the RV that I just go back and look at that. I'm like, how did I make this happen? It's such small increments that when you finally stop and compare yourself to the previous version of you and you're like, okay, no, this is worth it. You just have to stick to it and it's worth it. Well, you guys look fantastic and are such an inspiration. You know, people can use the RV life as an excuse not to do it. Well, we don't have our equipment with us. We don't have room for that. And it's hard to find a place to work out sometimes or a gym or whatever. And or you could say the opposite. Like you said, well, this is like a perfect vehicle to do this. Now you can get out in nature and go hiking and use your surroundings to exercise. And your bikes really helped you with that. Is that right? Yeah, they have. You know, we've actually had them for 16 years. We just got brand new bikes. We're partnering with the company now and we're so excited about it. But the bikes really did give us that freedom because I think too, especially for a lot of RVers, you know, we're stopped constantly when we're in RV parks because a lot of RVers that aren't the younger family, they're the empty nesters and up. Being able to balance is really hard. Being able to sit up on a bike is really hard. Trikes, we mountain bike just like we would on a regular bike with them. But what I love about them is you're sitting in them like you're in a Lazy Boy recliner because it's a recumbent bike. So instead of looking down at the ground and at that yellow line, we're actually taking in the views and we can look and see everything around us. And so it makes bike riding, for me, a hundred times more enjoyable. And so I think especially with our viewers that are in that 40, 50, 60 plus age range, they really do give you that freedom to be able to explore the way you want to. And it's comfortable and it's easy. and you know, we love them because we go camping. My daughter and I went on a nine day road trip and, you know, we can just load them up with up to about 300 pounds of supplies and just take off. If you're looking for a bike, you're not sure what you want, you can get them electric or not. They really have been for us, probably the biggest and best tool that we use every day. We love them. Katie insists that we get about minimum 10 miles a day in. And that honestly is so fun because we don't like to take the same trails every time. So to go hit a different spot and go put 10 miles on, or more. It's just, it's awesome. Oh, uh, I love that. And I've never been on a recumbent bike. And I think that that might be the key for me to enjoy it because I've really never enjoyed bike riding. You know, Randy loves it. I would rather hike because I want to look up and look at the view. And you're right, that recumbent position really lets you look up and see the view while you're safely sitting. I love that idea. I'm so glad you guys shared about it. And I love that you guys are partnering with them. I'm excited to share the links in the show notes and on our website about the bikes and the company and all of that. I'm excited to look into it too. So thank you for sharing all that. And so I always like to find out because when people are trying to figure out if this RV life is going to be for them, there's so many things that they're worried about. We had so many worries and we didn't know if it was going to be, you know, difficult or easy if we were going to make a big mistake. And I always like to find out what has been easier than you thought about this RV life. You know, we have very different feelings this time around versus last time because it's easier to make money online. You know, we can have our jobs and all the things because we still do work part time ish. And um, I think my biggest concern this time around was more of an emotional thing of being nervous to leave my adult kids and our other grandkids that don't travel. And it has been so much easier than I thought we have our kids out every couple months to visit with us making relationships is so much easier on the road. I think a lot of people are worried that they won't be able to have friendships and make friends. And those things really are important to be able to kind of have that normalcy of life. And so that has been a lot easier this time is just being able to keep relationships with FaceTime and internet and all the things that we need. I think people get worried that they'll miss their friends and family. And that has been a lot easier than I thought it would be this time. And I think it's a good piece of advice for people because we talked to someone back in Orlando that we were out riding our trikes and we get to the boat dock area at the RV park and we were talking to someone and they're like yeah we just got on the road full time and we're getting off of the road now because we're just not making any friends it's a lonely thing and we were the first people that they had talked to and we asked them how often are you going out talking to people and they're like well not often (laughs) it's so easy to walk around the park and just say hi to someone and it's not intrusive it's easy 
easy to do and there's always a conversation to be sparked up and people love it when you do it. So if you're out there and you're worried about that, just go up and talk to people. It makes them happy too. And there's so many friends to be made at every RV park. I just love it. It's a great community. It really is. That was the one thing we were so surprised at too. We have made so many awesome friends. The only thing is it's kind of hard to say goodbye because you're not sure when you're going to see them again. But yes, <laughs> you know, it is so nice to be able to keep in touch through social media and stay in touch and find out how they're doing and plan a meet up again. But we have made so many wonderful friends throughout our travels. And then I think seeing our family, being able to RV, I think our relationships are even better now because they know like we're only here a limited time. So we spend more quality time together. You know, when we used to live down the street, we barely saw each other because you kind of take each other for granted. And then when we come in town, we're usually in town with our family and friends for about three months. And it's like weekly we see each other because we know it's only three months and we're going to miss each other. And so we love the quality time that we get to spend with our family and friends. And because we travel, we get to see more people. You know, when we lived in Florida, we had come to Ohio for a week and see them for one week out of the year. And same thing when we lived in Ohio, we'd go to Florida, see our family and friends there. And now we get to go three months in Florida, three months in Ohio, and then travel throughout the country and then see other family members that we've never been able to see before. So I think this actually makes our relationships even better to be able to travel full time. I do too. It really is. And you can build relationships. You know, as a grandma, I didn't want to lose some of our grandkids. And you can build relationships over FaceTime. And we have found fun ways. You know, there's a fun little toy that we can record a story and it puts a card into our grandson's little toy and it reads a story. And so the relationships really can be built. And I feel like we're more intentional now because we were like you, our kids were 30 minutes away. And we knew they were there. We didn't get to see them as much. And now we're being so intentional with making relationships strong. I think that is the key right there is what Katie said. Living intentionally and not just waking up, looking forward to the time you go back to bed, but saying, what's going to happen today? What am I going to make happen? Oh, it's such a beautiful change. That is so true. Having a great attitude like that is definitely life changing. And it really puts things in a perspective. You know, what do you get to do today versus what do I have to do today? And all of that is love that. And so I always like to find out too, is there been anything that's a little bit more difficult about RV life than you thought it would be? The only thing that I think, and I'm just going to talk about this because I think when we meet people, this is the biggest question they ask us. I have some significant health challenges and it's a little bit more difficult when it comes to doctor appointments and those type of things. And so many people we meet, that's what stops them from getting on the road. And so it's not difficult. It's just different. And you just have to plan and do things more different. And so the biggest hindrance when we talk to friends is, oh, I I don't think I can because we need, you know, be close to doctors, we need this or that. And so it's a little more difficult, but it's doable. And I think that's kind of the key is there are different challenges for families, it could be difficult making money, it could be, you know, difficult for all the reasons reasons people have, but not letting that difficulty stop you and just finding a way to make it different rather than difficult is the big key. And so I think that would probably be the most difficult, I would say, but everything's doable. If you just make a plan, it's it's quite easy. Yeah, we go to a place and we want to look up where certain hospitals are and emergency rooms are just so we know where they're at if we need them and book out any appointments that are needed medically in advance to whether we need to fly to them and be there or whether they can, nowadays there's so much access with telehealth that you just have to plan it. You know, if once you know what your challenge is, then you find your way around it. That's such good advice. And I do hear that from so many people that, oh, I couldn't go because I can't leave my doctors and there's just too many medical appointments that I'm going to have to make and I won't be able to be away from that. But you are a testament to that, that it can work. And so I love that you shared that for our listeners. I love also that you said, instead of it being difficult, it's just going to be different. And if you plan accordingly, you can make it work. And I love that. That's a great, great attitude. In order to make traveling 
doing work appropriately right now. Katie has worked really hard with her medical team. And you have how many appointments? And I have 32 appointments in May, doctor appointments. And they're really great. A lot of them are willing to do our checkup over telehealth. You know, just really talking to my team. This is just a totally different conversation, I guess. But there is a lot of people that struggle with chronic illnesses or different illnesses. And I think if you really look at what's important to you, and I found a medical team that agrees that your mental health is such a huge part of it. And so if we're going to let a chronic illness or something stop you, and then you're going to stay home and you're not going to experience, you're not going to get out and exercise and do the things that you need, it's just as bad for you. And so finding doctors that understand what's important to you is key and just making it work. Oh, that's such great advice for so many people. Thank you so much for sharing more about your story and just for opening up to our listeners a little bit, because I think that's so inspiring and so motivating. And I know that's going to help some people listening. You're welcome. Wow. Doesn't Katie have the most beautiful mindset? Katie and Vern have the best attitudes and are so generous to share so much with us. Next week can't come soon enough for you to hear part two. You won't want to miss it. In the meantime, go on over to Instagram and follow them at nomad.nesters. I will put a link in the show notes or you can visit roamyourhome.com slash nomadnesters. Thanks so much for listening and I hope to see you on the road. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Roam in Your Home podcast and YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love it if you would subscribe to our show and consider giving us a five-star review. It's free and would mean the world to us and help us grow. If you know anyone who would also enjoy this podcast, please share it with a friend. I would also love to connect with you on Instagram or Facebook at Roam in Your Home. Come back next week for another fun adventure. But until then, stay safe and we hope to see you on the road.